In this video, we're going to talk about prime lenses versus zooms, when you should use them, and which are better. Let's start with the basics. What are the differences between prime and zoom lenses? A prime lens is a lens with a fixed focal length, which means the angle of view can't be changed. Effectively, no zoom. The only way to make the subject closer with a prime lens is to physically move the camera closer to the subject. And also, if you want to fit more in your frame, you physically have to move further away from your subject. On a prime lens, the focal length is represented by the millimetre number. And you'll see this on all lenses. So, for example, I'm filming this video here with a prime 16mm lens. Now, 16mm is fairly wide angle, so it's good for this type of shot where I want to fit lots in. Focal lengths of around 50 to 85 millimeters are both common separate prime lenses, which are much more suited for more focused shooting, say for portrait shots where you don't necessarily want as much background in the shot. So lenses with a higher millimeter number will have a narrower focal length, making your subject seem closer. Zooms, however, do exactly what the name suggests. They can zoom in on a subject. This is called variable focal length. Zoom lenses will normally have a zoom ring on the side of the lens, which means that you can actively zoom in and out, moving the focal length from wider to narrower to zoom in more. This will make your subject seem closer without having to move the camera. Again, the focal length on a zoom lens is represented by millimeter numbers, but instead of one, it will have two, which is a range. So, for example, this lens here is an 18 to 105 millimeter lens. So that means that at 18 millimeters, it's wide angle and can see roughly about the same as this lens that I'm using here. But you can zoom all the way into 105 millimeters, which will make your subject seem much closer, focusing your shot on a certain subject. And of course, you can use any focal length of any number in between. So if you wanted to shoot at 50 or 85 millimeters, you can do that with a zoom lens as long as the focal length that you want to shoot at is within the range written on the lens. So at this point, you might be thinking, why bother getting a prime lens if a zoom gives you more options of focal length? Well, there's a few good reasons why. A huge reason why you might opt for a prime lens is the aperture. Generally, you'll find fixed focal length lenses will have a wider maximum aperture compared to their zoom counterparts. Aperture is represented by the F number written on a lens. So for the example that I'm using here, this 16 mm lens, it has a maximum aperture of f1.4. And the lower the f number, the wider your aperture will be. So f1.4 means that your, your lens will have a pretty wide aperture. And lenses with wide apertures are often described as fast lenses. Wide aperture provide plenty of plus points to a lens. Firstly, allowing a lot of light onto the camera's sensor. This means that you can shoot in low light or indoors much more effectively compared to a lens with a narrower aperture. It means that you can get much clearer and crisper shots in these low light situations compared to other lenses. A lens with a narrower aperture, for example, will struggle to take as clear a shot in low light without having to either have the shutter open for longer, which will lead to more blur in your shots, especially if you are not mounted on a tripod, or having to bump up the ISO, which is effectively artificial light added to your shot, which adds noise to lighten up your shots. So a wide maximum aperture on a lens is a very advantageous for people shooting in low light situations. A wide aperture also allows for a shallower depth of field effect. This is essentially where you get blurry or kind of creamy backgrounds they'll often be described as, and this can give your shots a very professional look and gives you great picture separation between your subject and your background. So for example, if you're going to be primarily using your lens for portrait photography, this is an effect you will see a lot. It makes your subject really stand out, but makes the backgrounds look blurry in a very professional way, very considered separation between the two layers of your photos. And it can also be great for videos like this, where I have my background blurry compared to me. As prime lenses only have to cater for a single focal length, they will generally have much wider apertures than zoom lenses. Other factors to consider are the size and weight of prime lenses. Generally, they will be much lighter and smaller compared to zoom lenses. So this could be a big deal breaker, especially when it comes to portability. If you're already using a smaller camera, such as an APS-C mirrorless camera, which is a small camera anyway, which you may have bought for its portability, you don't necessarily want to be carrying around a huge lens with that, counteracting the idea of having a smaller camera in the first place. 
So prime lenses on the whole will be smaller than zooms. However, you can get smaller and larger of both depending on how much you want to spend. Prices can also be a huge plus point when it comes to prime lenses. If you are on a smaller budget and you know exactly what type of shot you want to take, you're generally going to be able to find a good quality prime for less than a zoom. Especially if you don't mind shooting with manual only, so that means no autofocus, you can find some prime lenses for an extremely low price, which is great if you're just getting started and you want to play around with some new lenses. So primes offer a lot of plus points. However, the big downside, of course, is that lack of zoom. So if you need a lot of reach, say for wildlife or sports photography, then primes are very rarely likely to be the right option for you, as they offer so much less versatility in terms of focal length and zoom. If you're enjoying, please like the video and consider subscribing to the channel where you can see more content like this. And on the topic of versatility, that is something that zoom lenses definitely do provide. They provide that wide range of focal lengths without having to move the camera. And that is the main reason that people would opt to buy a zoom lens. The difference here, shot from 18mm to 105 with the same lens, really shows the difference that you can get from this exactly the same subject with a zoom lens. This is all without moving the camera. And this can be hugely advantageous for all types of photography, especially the aforementioned wildlife and sports photography, where the more zoom, the better. Now zooming in generally leads to more camera shape. And this is something that is also a big selling point of zoom lenses in general, which is that most modern zoom lenses will have image stabilization built into the lens, which is particularly great if you are recording videos where if you are zoomed in more, your, your shots will be shakier and shakier. So if you want that image stabilization, zooms are often the way to go. And despite me citing portability as a pro of a prime lens, in another way, zoom lenses can be more portable than prime lenses, despite being heavier and larger than almost all prime lenses. If you know you're going to be shooting multiple types of shots where you need different focal lengths, if you're using prime lenses, you'll likely need to take out one, two, or even three lenses to cover all those focal lengths, which means carrying around a lot more stuff. If you just have a single zoom lens that covers all those focal lengths, then boom, you just need a single lens and that's all you need to take out with you. Definitely worth considering if you know that you're going to be taking lots of different shots where you need different focal lengths. As mentioned before, a zoom's low light performance is likely to be worse than a prime lens, so definitely worth bearing in mind. The lens that I've been using as an example here, the Sony 18-105, to has a constant aperture of f4, which is considerably darker than f1.4, which was on the 16mm prime lens we were looking at. It's also worth bearing in mind that the majority of zoom lenses will actually get darker the more you zoom in. So the widest aperture will be narrower the more it is zoomed in. So your shots will get even more dark the more you zoom in. So if you will definitely need to be shooting in low light or a lot of indoor photography, this is definitely something worth bearing in mind. The only answer to which is better is, well, it depends. It depends on how you use your camera and what type of shot you are trying to achieve. For portraits or situations where you need good low light performance, it is likely that a prime lens will be the better option. If you need versatility of shooting, and especially if you need more reach for things like wildlife and sports photography, then a zoom lens is almost definitely going to be the right option for you. For a long time, I was pretty much only using zoom lenses for that range, but I found this lens, the Sigma 16mm f1.4, is perfect for indoor situations like this where I don't always have the best light and, if I want, those blurrier backgrounds. Whereas I'll use my zoom lens for out and about and shooting wildlife or where I just need more range of focal lengths. I'll leave my video reviews and links to buy these lenses in the description below. What do you prefer? Primes or zooms? Let me know in the comments. And if you've enjoyed, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. But until next time, see ya.